Okay, so I will call this regular meeting of the Public Site and Building Commission to order at 7.01 p.m. And if you'll join me in the pledge. Everybody say under God. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, you got I got the complaints. Yeah, some people are not seen under God. No, it wasn't part of the complaint. So, okay, so public input going once, going twice, done, correspondence, nothing extra, and we're going to see if we can keep everybody muted until you need to speak so we don't get the feedback that we have been getting. Um, we figured out the feedback issue. So hopefully if I can get my computer going so I can um, screen share if I have to. Uh, that would be nice, but I can't. So. Um, so the first thing I want to do before we get into our old business is to add something on the agenda, which I think kind of we don't have to do, but we'll do it anyways. So under um, the Bethel High School HVAC upgrades, I'd like to put a bullet under there. So I'll make a motion that we add under the high school HVAC upgrades, a bullet for um, the bid opening and bid amounts from the procurement committee for discussion. Need a second. I'll second that. And we'll, you'll see, we'll get into it um, a little bit later. So, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done. <clears throat> and now we have the meeting minutes. So, I will make a motion that we approve the regular meeting minutes from um, July 24th, 2024. Need a second on that. I'll second. Dave Horvath seconds. Any questions? Time. Anything on those minutes? Everybody's good? All in favor? I, Aye. I abstain. Roy abstains. I think John Perna has to abstain too, right? Yes. Okay. So we're good with that. So we'll jump right into uh, the old business as it's listed so the firing range i uh, not sure where we are with the co i have not heard yet from chris baldwin on that i did see chief pugner today here at the municipal center and he said things are going fine no complaints etc which is good um and the, so the outstanding things that we have are the co and then the, having them make a fair unit controls set up so that heating and cooling happens automatically and not on an alarm when someone has to go down there and put it on. So I know Mark and David yep. have been communicating on that. And yep. So what do you have on that? So where we stand right now is, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, action targets based, I mean, sorry, ESCs, ESCs, ESC. ESC is basically saying they can't do anything without taking action targets controls out of the backnet protocol and just using their controls and something I don't, and again I have to look I haven't seen the controls that action target has but I just find it odd that that wouldn't have already been part of action targets package yeah that their controls you know is it not a thermostat that like a normal thermostat I don't know I gotta see what it is there's something in there because I know that's how the alarm is supposed to go off. That there's right. something reading the air temperature and the because when we did the um, ribbon cutting and yep. Lieutenant Libertini said, "Oh, the other day it was reading, I don't know, 87," and I came down and it cooled down right away. But he hadn't gotten an alarm; he just went in there because he went in there. And but did he turn it on manually? Yes. So there's no. That's what I got. I have to. So right because 87 is kind of warmish. I don't. I, we probably have it somewhere, but I, do we have the control package? Uh, it, yes, it should be the proposal from ESC. I mean, yeah, yes, it should be. Well, I'm sorry, that in, that in Aons. 
because I'd like to see what Aon see, provided. We don't have Aon's thing because it went through Active Target. Ah, okay. uh, right. We might have to get it from that. Okay. So, and Mark, so I don't know how, how can we get that from Action Target? I, will they give it to us? Um, I I assume they'll give it to us, but they have been a real problem, you know, uh, getting anything out of them that didn't add, uh, you know, a request for additional funding. So um, I, I can ask them for sure. And but uh, I would imagine that our engineers have these as well, and I would want to go there first. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I just would like to review it. Just. You know, just something's just not jiving with me. Yeah. So I, until I see what they provided. Right. I can't can, really com com yeah. comment. We can look at what Action Target gave us for plans. Yeah. Because that's on the share drive. But if that doesn't include the whole entire Mode of operation, AI yeah. Package, you might have to search a little more to get that. Yeah. Because that's something that's the mode of operation. How it's supposed to operate. Right. Right. Okay. Because if everything's manual, then that's just. Strange to me. Well, and and when we discussed, I don't know if it was the last meeting or the meeting before, and Mark was remembering too yeah. that there was a whole discussion on automatic, automatic, and automatic, yeah, yeah. That's gonna make it run more than if you do it manually, which means we use up more filters. And everybody was saying, well, it's cheaper to replace a filter now and again than to have mm -hmm. the whole yeah the pre filters everything go, you know, because yeah. there's it's too cold or it's too hot or whatever. Right. Yeah. So we need to continue to look into that, correct? Yeah. Well, I, I will I will look into that with the engineers. I'll start there. Thanks, and Mark. and um, I'll share that information with you, Dave. And thank you for your help on that. And uh, I'll try to do it so that the engineers aren't looking for more money either. So uh, we'll try well, to keep that out of the mix. Right, because if we discussed it at a meeting, I'm thinking that we would have asked to have and, yeah. and if, if my memory is correct, the engineers were in that meeting with us. The architect yeah. and the engineers were in that meeting. So why it didn't get designed appropriately, I don't know. And, yeah. you know my apologies for not being in the field and in inspecting it, you know, when it when it first went in. But, uh, you know, we, we had a long discussion about it. I remember it specifically. Okay. Yeah. And that was several months ago, too, so. At least five, six months ago, at least. But you know, once we, if we can get the you know operation mode of operation for the controls from what Aon provided to Action Target, then I can go from there. Okay. I will look for that specifically. Thank okay. you. That's why I didn't reply to that email. I wanted to talk through with you. Yeah, I figured you were thinking about something, which is why you hadn't replied to Rob yet. So. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you again for your help. No, I need that's all right. So hopefully we'll have something next meeting. Yeah. I will check in again with Chris Baldwin on the CO and see where he had said that he has to see an issue with issuing it. He just needed to make sure he had completed all the paperwork and read all the reports and that everything was in place, which we know it is, but yeah. Um and so outstanding invoices that we have one invoice tonight from CES. However, it's not their final invoice in that they still have to do remaining um, seasonal testing review and then they will bill us their final amount. And then we still owe money to ESC, Action Target, and Downs. I have the Downs application for payment and we were saying we were going to hold off on that and Action Target until we get the CO. We haven't gotten a bill from Action Target yet, so I'm not sure if they have some sort of time frame when they wait and then send out their final bill but i haven't gotten anything yet else do we have any kind of time frame for the ceo or is waiting he, i'm thinking he should be able to give it to us it's, there's a temporary ceo in that right and i'm not sure but it's taking it yeah. yeah so i'll check in with him and find out there's mm -hmm. no issues but because if i if there were issues that either here or needed to have more information on I had put an email together that included ESC, CES, anybody that could answer any questions they would have specifically um, the, rep the report that CES put together, which has everything in it. And if some part of it didn't jive with what they needed to know, 
then um, they would have asked that question and they haven't yet. So I'm assuming that it's basically just looking at paper or making sure paperwork is completed. So I will find out. Um, and so unless anybody has any other questions or anything else to report that I don't know about, we have one invoice. Do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. So I have this invoice from CES. I make a motion that we approve CES invoice number 2023352.00.00 dash 00000007 for the month of July in the amount of $794. Second. Dave Warfast seconds. That leaves a couple uh, three thousand left um, for there to do their seasonal testing review, which will happen through all the season. They usually do a whole year, don't they? Yeah, because May on the school projects, they did a whole year, and then on the original building, they did each season. That was so, awesome. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Done. And unless Mark or Lieutenant Durkin have anything they need to throw in on the range, um, I think we can be finished with that part. Good. I have nothing to, nothing to add at this point in time. Um, right. I, I just want to ask Lieutenant Durkin how it's working and running and make sure it's uh, doing what they want. Uh, everything, everything is going good. Uh, I've been on vacation for the last week. I haven't heard anything new other than things are working good. He said he was on vacation, but he was returning today, so he may be back at work. All right, so we can move on from the range. We've got a couple things we need to check on, and we'll bring that to the next meeting, to um, the school renovation projects, which I think Dr. Carver was saying it's still in that waiting to hear from the state phase. Is that true? That was Johnson and Rockwell? In terms of what? The, the audit and anything. I don't know oh, if there's anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so we um we we I think I shared last time that we um that I had a meeting with Ellison, who is uh, I don't yes. actually know a role, director of grants for DAS, talked a little bit about um some of the confusion with um uh the directive that Costa Diamantes gave us around the environmental issues. She asked me to submit a whole bunch of information. Uh, I did with the help of Gerilyn. Um, she was extremely helpful. We got a revised 1049R to the state and all the supporting documentation that I had and that Gerilyn was able to put together to include um, eligible costs that um, at the end of the project, and I think we talked about this last time when Rizzo was spending their contingency, um, didn't have change orders, um, but that was partially based on the conversation that we had with Costa. So um, they did uh, get back to me, and um, and they are they are supportive of all of the environmental issues and shifting the budget from Rockwell to Johnson. Uh, so I'm sorry, Johnson to Rockwell. Um, but they're not they're not being as cooperative with regards to those um, last set of, uh, I'm calling them change orders, but change orders were never submitted that Rizzo used when they were coming, uh, spending on their contingency. So I'm working with Dan just to see what the steps are. Um, so we're, we're making good progress. Um, and, um, and Gerilyn then put together another set of information for me because they wanted specifically um, all of the um, invoices and change orders associated with the environmental issues at Rockwell, which drove the Rockwell budget up. So I have all that information from her. In fact, she gave it to me pretty much within the next day or two. Um, and um, so now we have to go back to DAS um, at this point. So um, 
we're, we're making progress, but we're still in flux. Okay, good. But it, it, it's it's forward, so it's not like it's just kind of in limbo. It's there's no, no, it's movement. definitely moving forward. And so, so what I what I'm understanding is that they're more um, inclined to do reimbursement, accept the change orders for environmental stuff, and do reimbursement for those, but not so much some of the other sort of later things. That's right. correct. That's okay. correct. Because That's they they better. didn't fit in the six month timeline. You know that yeah, happened yeah. a lot in the project, and yeah, um, and. So, that's the issue is the ones later in the kind of at the very end that didn't meet the six months timeline. Okay. And Nancy, I copied you on that email, correct? That I sent to DAS. I thought I did. I, yeah, I think so. That was okay. Like last I just want to make sure I kept you in the loop. Yeah. So we're, we're working through it. Okay. So another school thing that we have, we had discussed this at the last meeting, but I didn't have this in hand, is a change order from STV. It's an additional services agreement, number eight, for um, the rest of the work that we had to do on the level spreader. Uh, there were a couple of things that were kind of added in as far as the design that um, James Tomato came up with, et cetera. So I'll make a motion. We can discuss it. So I will make a motion that we accept change order additional services agreement number eight for Johnson School from STV in the amount of the additional amount of one thousand seven hundred and thirty eight dollars and seventy cents. And I don't think I need to say anything else. So that's level spreader in the final closeout. And it's this is actually the amount that um was um, used on the level spreader there's some left in rockwell for the additional closeout and not to exceed amount and this is uh, not to exceed but it's actual hours so this is the end of it yes so i need a second so can, i'll second it so roy seconds it so i can't my computer's being really weird and i can't put it up on the screen if you want to see it parts of it but i did send it out um it's the most pages are just their standard thing that gets attached with all the different stuff that was part of the original contract that was signed. Um, it's been signed by um, STV. I need to get the town signature. And it just talks about the timeline and the additional amount for the little spreader and the final closeout and uh, state, audit, state audit allowance, which mentions the amount still left in Rockwell. Does anybody have any other questions or need to see? Will that be covered with the state allowance, you think? Or? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. You've already submitted that change order thing, so it won't be covered, right? Well, and it's also because the level spreader it, was something that we knew. It, yeah, it that wouldn't right. have been covered. It was outside the scope of the original grant application. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so it wouldn't have been covered anyway. So, but good question. Anything else on this questions? And I know they spent a lot of time on that. There's oh, yeah. a lot of back and forth. Yep. And, uh, yeah. When Pete was out from some person, and, right. and there was a redo in, in between. Right. There's there something that some pipe was damaged when it was delivered. And then the pipe was yeah, late was, first, was, and then it was finally delivered, and it was damaged. There, was, to a, get more. there was a lot of back and forth. Yes. There. So yeah. it, doesn't, it does not surprise me. That yeah. there, was, there was an additional bill. Here. And then there was one other thing that they found that he needs to bury some things that he had yeah. to himself that all got taken care of. That's I'm up there, but hopefully it's worth All right, so let's vote on this uh, change order from STV. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Done with that. I will get that signed. And anything else on the schools anybody has? Nope. Okay, so the locker rooms are next. Yes, Kathy. Um, actually, it's the uh, high school. Oh, the high school. Okay, so that's sorry, everybody had to wait for that. So the high school um, HVAC, the um, the bids had gone out. I think the last meeting we talked about this. Uh, bids had gone out for the uh, contractor to do all the installation, etc., and then owners rep, and they were due. 
August 5th, I think, and then that got moved back a week. So they were opened on Monday as well. And there were three, I, I, Dr. Carver sent out attachments. I sent out one from the procurement committee that showed the amounts and the names of the company. And then Dr. Carver sent out attachments with the proposals, which were a little wacky and somewhat incomplete. However, um, what we're gonna look at tonight, at least to start, is the um, owner truck. Get somebody on board for that, and then they can help us with uh, the contractor. So, um, so we have three amounts, STV, $96,591, Environ Energy LLC, $126,835, and COPPA Group, uh, $209,200. So, Kind of Nancy, um, is it okay to say something? <laughs> so sure. I, I, I have asked Brad to jump on um, because um, Nancy had some questions about the process in terms of like um, the actual approval of the BRIDS and explaining not only the town procedures, but then how that relates to the state and kind of how to look at them. Brad, do you want to jump in? Uh, sure. So... In essence, so we got the three bids. Obviously, there's a wide variety in them. Um, because it's got the state piece in it, um, my concern is if we'd have to have a really good reason not to go with the lowest bid, which I don't know why we wouldn't. We've had a good relationship with STV. Um, but if we didn't, I don't know if the state would allow it as um, reimbursable. Um, so that was my main concern. Um, and then I know one of the questions I think you had at one point, Nancy, is that um, one of the other bids had engineering work with it, um, which was not part of the scope of the bid um, because we have Kohler Ronin for the engineering piece. Right. Um, so yeah. I don't know why that vendor included that, but it wasn't necessary. We're not looking for it. Yeah, it didn't actually include it specifically in the proposal. They just in, in naming the people on their team. They named this one as an engineer, and this one has done that, and this one. So, um, kind of like covering all their bases just in case we needed someone. However, as I further, it was um, Environ Energy. As I read further into their proposal, um, it kind of sounded like it didn't read the RFP or any of the other information because they made some assumptions saying they they didn't know whether plans were complete and but the plans were part of right. the process. <laughs> and um, there was one other thing they said which I thought was kind of weird um anyways it just seemed like and, and again I don't know who came to the walkthrough and um, do you, I don't know Dr Carver if Jen I know a, ST, I, I know STV came I don't I know that for a fact um, I, I wasn't there at that particular walkthrough and Jen's on vacation this week or otherwise she would have been on the call or there in person. So I, I can't speak to that, but I think okay. it's my understanding and Brad can correct me that the way it works is that is, is that you look at the lowest qualified and you would have to come up with a disqualifier, meaning that if there was some aspect of the, um, okay. um Bid document. I hear myself coming. Hear myself. Out slowly. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Um, but if there was some aspect of the bid document that wasn't um, addressed in that, then yes. you could disqualify that. Um, I which looked I, at the bid document. Yeah. And compared it to the proposal, and I, I didn't see anything that jumped out at me. But I don't know if anybody in the committee noticed anything. Uh, I did not. Uh, actually, the, so there was, um, I don't know, we, there's all the pieces of the bid documents, because there, there's, it wasn't whole one whole big document. There's, you can go in and see, and so all the abatement stuff is in there, all the testing, and then what you had to do for abatement, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the contractor should have that, and we should make sure that that's part of what we're keeping track of, so to speak. And that's in, that's been mentioned. So that's a good thing. There's all the different part. I kind of made my own little sort of spreadsheet in my notebook and, you know, all the things that were asked for, like, uh, 
you know, keeping track of the budget and all, all that was covered. So, yeah. um, so I guess the question is in terms of procedure, Brad, like, so they would make a recommendation to the procurement committee or that? No. Was so per the charter, the public site and building committee makes a recommendation to the board of selectmen. The procurement uh, committee has a meeting either Monday or Tuesday to make a recommendation to the board of selectmen. Uh, and then the board of selectmen can do whatever they want. Um, because they're just recommendations. Right. Um, with the Board of Selectmen meeting Tuesday and trying to get this up and running, and that's why some of the rush at this point with the bid opening being this week and then having it in front of the public site and building is we'd like the Board of Selectmen to vote on it Tuesday night so that the owner's rep could review the mechanical piece. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion so we can discuss further if needed. Um, so I will make a motion that we accept the proposal from STV for the uh, Bethel High School HVAC uh, mechanical upgrades. The, the only other thing I would add, um, I was very excited to see Geraldine on there. Um, you know, I know she lives halfway across the country, but she really understands the school construction office and like the reimbursement process and the thoroughness of her paperwork and you know when i i ask her to do anything or you know if i need anything she's got she's turnaround is immediate so i was really happy to see that she's still on the team okay but first i need to finish my motion and have a second oh i'm so, sorry i thought you were done no. <laughs> i'm just, gonna meet no myself one. i'm gonna mute myself <laughs> need to uh, i need so um and in, in the amount of um ninety six thousand five hundred and ninety one dollars second second okay is that enough yeah, there oh so I i'm just what we need to do is add to that that we accept the proposal and um forward our recommendation to the board of selectmen mm -hmm. gotta say that too okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so we've got Roy second. So now if we need to discuss further, we can, which we've kind of pretty much covered all the bases. Yeah. And it, I was pleased. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, like I said, I read their proposal and then the Envi environment energy and I couldn't get the Kafka one open. Um, but kind of think it's, yeah. yeah. Anybody else have any questions or anything else? Mm -hmm. No, I think right. we've had a good relationship yep. through the years. And, yep. you know, I'd, I'd like to see some forward with that. Yes, because they can be a big help in choosing the contract. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Should be on board as soon as possible. Yep. Okay, so let's vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye, 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 aye. Opposed? Done. All right. So, and thanks for the input, Brad and Dr. Carver. Thank um, you. Thank you. It's a little different some You're other welcome. times. Yep. It's different than other times when we had to start from scratch and then had to interview people and all that, but I think we don't have to do that this time. So. Yeah, so I'll find out if this, well, I'll ask Mark. So this that we received, which is the proposal, though so that's the change order, the proposal I didn't print, is that what needs to be signed by for selectmen? Or is there some other official document that needs to be signed? Uh our con are you asking me if our contract yeah. needs to be signed? Yes. Uh, the proposal okay. needs to be accepted. The town can issue us a purchase order um, and we, we can work off that or our contract can be signed. It has been signed by the first selectman in the past. Yes. So I'll find out if he wants to sign it and I'll have it printed or I'll email it to, you know, attach it as an email to him and, sure. and Mary, see if they want to print it and sign it, file it. And and we do do purchase orders now. Okay. You can do it with Sam. Okay. Yeah. So I think we'll, I think I think we the one step, Nancy, that I would add is that it has to go to the procur per, uh, procurement committee, and then the recommendation goes to the first selectman. They have to actually vote first. The selectmen have to vote. Oh, right. They do. And I talked to Dan, and he said that recommendations come from both us and the right. procurement committee. Right. It doesn't go to the procurement committee from us and then to the board selectman. Yeah, so I'll make sure that I'll get the minutes from Kathy. I'll send them along and um, along with the proposal and say for your next meeting, please do what you have to do with this. OK, 
Okay, good. so we're good with that. And then the Dr. Carver had sent out all of the proposals from the people who, the, from the mechanical contractors. And so those we ought to take a look at and be able to discuss them along with whoever will be joining us at meetings from STV when we go to accept. Because um, we're gonna need to look at, there's alternates and look at the budget and then we have to look at who else because we have so now we have stv on board is all the you know what we have to do a commissioning agent we have to get a commissioning agent on board and then is all the abatement being done through the mechanical contractors or do we have to have a special testing something something in place i, be I so believe the I believe the bid was structured so that it included abatement as part of the bid, but Jen could answer that better. She just happens to be on vacation this week, so she's not here, but I'm 99% I'm sure that it's included. So we can look at that at our, at our next meeting. All right, good. All right. Uh, anything else on the high school HVAC? And the proposals, I suppose you could also share into the shared drive. Yes, I absolutely will. Um, and I know that, um, like you, like you said, once once the owner's rep is approved by the board of selectmen, um, you know, uh, we'll obviously be back at probably at the next meeting talking a little bit more. I don't think um, Kohler Ronan's had a chance to to review the bids yet, and I know Jen hasn't because she's been on vacation. So um, I think in the next couple of weeks we'll start to look at that. Yeah. How many companies ended up in? Three. three. Okay, so we have three this time. Yeah, Three, so it's yeah, save yeah. more. Hold uh, on. All state, save more cooling and heating, all state and ACS. Those are the three that are on the little spreadsheet from the procurement committee. Correct, correct, Nance. I just pulled up, Jen made a spreadsheet for me even while she was on vacation. Those are the three. <laughs> yeah, great. And yeah, because we want to. Make sure we cover all our when we're looking at their fit their base bids and any additional alternates um, that we also leave because we four point one million I think was the referendum amount. Correct. Yep. So we have to make sure all everything else is covered in that. That's name. correct. I mean, clearly we're going to have to pull back the scope on the project somewhere um, because not all the alternates are going to be able to be done. But right. that's that's part of the conversation. Yep. Yep. All right. So I think we're set with that, unless anybody else has any other questions. Yeah. And at the, at the share, if it's on the shared drive, um, then you can find it easily. Or the other thing that I do when I'm looking for parts and pieces is if you go on the town website and you go to agendas and meetings, and it has all the different. Uh, committees and commissions and boards listed. You go to the procurement committee and everything's there of the different procurement committee, the bids, bid documents, the um, RFP for both and it's 007 for the mechanical contractor, 008 for the owner's rep and anything, there were addendums. There were like four different addendums that were put out, which is why it was pushed back a week and most of the questions had to do with abatement and things like that because if school's in session and you're trying to do abatement, you got to figure all that out. So, yeah. um, so the four different addenda um, went out uh, end of July and then August date was the last one, which was changing the meeting date. Okay, moving along. Thank you, Dr. Carver. Thank you, Mark. Um, locker rooms. So you don't um, need me anymore, Nancy. I don't think so. I think we're good, Mark. Thanks so All much. Right. Well, thank you very much, folks. I'll sign out. Yep. Okay. Um, the locker room. So um, we've got the proposal, which we accepted at our last meeting, got the proposal from Peter. We looked at it, accepted it. After Roy, John, and uh, Rachel met with Peter again to make sure that we were dialing in on what we need. And I sent it to Dan and he wanted Melanie to look at it. So I had a conversation with Melanie and then she sent to Peter things she wanted to make sure were specifically either included or excluded. So that's where it is right now. And that just happened. I think she mm -hmm. mailed him something because she didn't have his email address. And I was like, I can't give it to you. 
And if you remember, the proposal had four parts. And the way she read it, and I think this is, and I didn't have it in front of me because I was driving. Um, for part one and two are what we're looking for to get to that, you know, schematic phase before we get into design development, which is going to be an additional amount of money, which has not been approved yet. We have to come up with what's that, what's that going to be, how are we going to get that approved, et cetera. So uh, once that's all signed, then we can start moving forward, get the retainer in place, and then they'll finish up whatever he has to finish. But the sketch that John brought a copy of the sketch, mm -hmm. um, so that was good of the, what we're looking at to do in that area. It's a little bit different, John. I don't know if you have it here to show you. So it's a, a little bit different in that this is the plumbing wall. And so the um, um, bathrooms were going to be on both locker room, locker room. So instead, it's smaller scale locker rooms. And this is going to be just a big open room, which with a maybe divider that we can add. And so it can be used a lot of different ways. And that's what um, kind of a whole new revamp. Yeah. Of, of, uh, yeah. It's a new set of eyes. Well, because that's kind of what Rachel was thinking about. And then also Dan, because Rachel said to Dan, the first meeting that we had, it's, it's not just a park and rec space. It's a town space. Yeah. What does the town need? And so they started looking at it. And we don't need these huge locker rooms. We need storage, which is they've got some storage going on. You know, a couple of showers, a couple of toilets, a couple of sinks, and we and should be just, good to go. We need the rooms. Yeah, yeah. Who did the drawing? Oh, Peter. Well, this is just a sketch. Sketch. That Peter did. And so he re sketched it. He re sketched yes. it while yeah. we were From the there. original plan that we had. Took yeah. the original, and Paul Rachel was there. We just kind of sat there and he explained some of the things that were, you know, she'd like to see. And Peter just started to sketch a little. We're just trying to get ourselves closer to. You know, we're totally going. Is it conducive mechanically wise? Because oh, they cool. replaced all the mechanical already. Yeah. It's all new, right? The air handlers and everything? Yes. Up on the roof, that's all. Yeah. It saved quite a bit of uh, plumbing. And I think I keep but remembering it saved, this. It saved some more walls, too. Was, yes, walls. Some... And there was a possibility that we were going to have to jackhammer up the floor to add plumbing. Yeah, yeah that's that was a better And we, we shouldn't have, like, because we added toilets in the GP room lobby, we might need a little fewer. Got to make sure code-wise yeah. whether we're, you know, before we go any further with this. But um, having a couple of, you know, a couple three sinks, couple three toilets, couple three showers, they can fit that in there. Um, this is just a sketch, really, based on the sizes that Peter has in his, you know, that from what we we're did. Trying to trying to keep within the same envelope yep. of what it was and yep. kind of minimize. Where we could. Yeah, and minimize that was both that eight. was kind of the the starting yeah. point. Yeah. And where, can, where can we save? Yeah, where can we save? Less demo, right? Which means less construction. So but again, keeping all the plumbing on that same plumbing wall so that we don't have to jack it. Actually, I'm I'm pleased that uh, Melanie is taking a hard look at it. So yes. I, I really do like the fact that there's another set of eyes looking at this. Trying to make sure we don't miss some yes. of these items. So, yes. so you know, I'm, I'm glad we're going that route. Mm. Yep. Kind of outside of us, we get another set of people that are looking. Well, sure. Because I, and I, I had emailed Peter this morning, I think, and said, you know, yes. you'll be contacted by that. the town yeah. attorney. And um, it's a little bit different than what they had set up with Eileen years ago because the money had already been approved. So she set everything up and they just worked off that. But um, now we've got some money, but we're going to need more. And, and do we wait and get like a whole total cost of design and construction and then go ask for that? Or do we just get the design done and then have to figure that out too? Yeah. So, you can just go to step by step. Yeah. yeah. How soon are we looking to get this done? Well, last year, the steep grant that we applied for was fall, September ish. So it would be great to get something in place enough 
so that if we apply, ready. we yeah. can apply for that C grant. And um, I think that again, even with that from that sketch, if there are you know, is there a way to do it in phases so we don't have to ask for millions and millions or whatever? Can we do? Yeah. We talked a little bit about that. That was a little tougher with this one. Was, well, I think because of the location. Yeah, though, yeah. it really kind of yeah. almost required to do everything. Right, right. At, at this point. Right, because if, so last year they said that the, uh, what we found out, Dan found out that with the steep grant, the people that received grants had already approved one. So if we can come up with some costs that are you know, good and get some funds approved, we might be more likely to get the grant. So uh, last year it was a five hundred thousand dollar grant. I think it might be larger this year, is what I'm remembering, but don't mm. don't quote me on it. Don't remember. So all right. Um the last thing that I just want to mention our next meeting is the 28th. And I just want to see I don't I, I will be here. I don't know if anybody knows there that's like that's the end of August. Are you I can around? tell you I'm not gonna be here. It's the first day of school. So. First day of school. All right. And oh, it's yeah. I'll be where is that my John shoes. Is, are you saying that that's the first getting paid for it? <laughs> John, are you saying that that's the first day of school? It's the first day of school for okay. me. All right. Yeah. So it's possible that you won't be here. No, John, there's I won't be here. You won't be here. Okay. Yeah. Roy, you yes. I should be and here. David me, John Menti should be here, and Dave Olson will be back from Maine. Okay. And we're still working on getting another person. Yeah. So just know that um, Kathy's going to be sending out the invitations. Did you already send it out? Or? I'm sending it out tomorrow. So Kathy's going to be away next week, right? Mm -hmm. So am I. She's going to send out the invitation early. And I'll get the agenda together. And if I can't do it before I leave, I'll have Casey's not going with you on your vacation. Yeah. Okay. Um, have Casey post it with the town clerk and then any attachments I'll have to just keep forwarding anything that we're going to discuss that we need to look at. We'll forward that to everyone. I just thought of something I think my employer might be a call after that day, but we'll find out. All right. Well, when you get the invitation, you can mm -hmm. maybe jump on and say yes or no right away so we know. I think my wife's going to be able to take her. She's got an apartment this year, so it's all furnished and stuff. So oh. she'll one car loan instead of two. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's not the 31st. Yes. Okay. So it's the tw that's the 28th. Season. Yeah. So, okay. So, okay. Um, anything else? Anybody can think of? We're good. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh, make a motion to end the meeting. No second. All, All right. favor? Aye, aye, aye. 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 Opposed? Then. All right. Thank Let's you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I look forward to talking to Mark. Hopefully, you can. Yeah. Get me some nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah.